Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here. For this video, I'm going to be looking at Caden Live's library of video and audio effects, how to find them, how to show what they do, and what there is really. Now, the point of making this video really is to say or point out that Caden Live probably has more effects than most people realize or need. So if you're struggling with Caden Live, you think, well, it can't do that. There are a couple of things relative to DaVinci that it really can't do, but that's a, those are very occasional things. It's more that, you know, there's a lot more to dig in to it than most users have uh, made use of. So regarding firstly, how to see all the effects. So I have by my effects, compositions and effects slash composition stack laid out as tabs in the center of my default view on Caden. Now, I'd like to draw your attention to the top of that panel. We have a number of buttons and these are very important. By default, it's on main effects and a lot of people don't think, including me for the first six months of using this program, to see what else there is. The favorite contains your favorite effects list, but there's a video reel button and there is an audio button. And if you click on these buttons, you're gonna get all the effects for video and audio respect respectively. In other words, the main effects, it's not all the effects in Caden Live, it's just a mishmash of the best or most used audio and video effects in one tab, but there are much more. So let's start with uh, video effects here. And I'm going to just briefly open each group and I'm also going to um, show you how to see what they do. Well, we may as well do that now. To the right, there is show slash hide description of the effects. And if I'm not mistaken, by default, this isn't on. So you need to click it. And now you can see we have a little uh, box here showing the description of each effect. Very, very useful because otherwise you're kind of flying blind or at least trying to go just based on, on the description. So I'm gonna quickly read off not every single effect because when you click into every, uh, the all video effects and all audio effects tabs, you really get a sense for how many of these there are. I don't have the number, um, but it's probably, I would reckon at least perhaps even 100 effects just within the video effects tab. So we have the first, uh, and these are all divided into these groups which populates um, by clicking into them. So the first group in video effects is alpha, mask, and keyring. And we have a number of effects there. The only one I've used in this box so far is chroma keying. Very useful if you're doing any work with a green screen. Actually, I take that back. I've also, also used obscure quite a lot for blurring out portions of a video. Next uh, group we have in video effects is blur and sharpen. Blur is going to be putting uh, blur onto different parts of the video. And the smart blur is quite useful in this for um, anonymizing or obscuring something that's in motion. Next, we have color and image correction. All these tools related to color correcting video. Very, very important, very useful. Three point balance. Another very useful one is lift, gamma, and gain. So you can play around with these. And one other point I've made about effects is that they can be applied on the clip or track level. If you want to apply an effect to a whole track, i.e. to the video track, you drag it on to the magic wand icon on the track. And if you want to put it to just a clip, just put it on a clip. So the light lift, gamma, gain, and if you like any of them, you wanna make them your favorites, you right click on an effect and you put it into add to favorites and then it shows up with a bold font. So these, the color correction, you can knock yourself out playing around with them. I do that from time to time to try pick up a couple new effects to learn. Um, the main one that I, I and I think a lot of people use would be lift, gamma and gain. You're gonna get your three color correction wheels there, uh, but there's clearly more as well. White balance would be quite a useful one as well for editing the white balance in post-processing. And again, if you turn on that show high description button and you click on an effect, you're gonna get a description of what it does. Deprecated um, is going to be ones that have been deprecated, but they're still in the program. 
it'll skip over those. Generate, I'm going to be honest with you, I have no idea what this does. It just shows you there's so much to learn in uh, Caden Live. So I'm going to go through them quicker because these are also ones I haven't really used yet. Gain and noise, image adjustment, motion, fade in, fade out. Well, that's pretty uh, pretty classic one. Um, effects on the video master. Stylization. These are... Uh, you know, kind of uh, comic-y likes things that you can put on the video and get an embossed effect or a glow effect. Transform, distort, and perspective, very useful. Transform effect I use constantly. You may notice if you've watched any of my other Caden Live videos, I frequently zoom in, zoom out on parts of the screen. That's all done by key by you by keyframing transform. So there's a rule called the 80-20 rule, which I think is that you use 20% of a program's capabilities 80% of the time. Very, very true for me in Caden, and I'd say most users probably even a 90-10 rule. 10% uh, of these I use constantly, 90% I haven't touched ever. Utility, uh, RGP Parade, Vector Scope again, never use them. MISC, um, and again, so I reckon more than 100, there might be even, uh, even more there. And then VR360 and 3D. As I learn new effects, uh, if someone hasn't described what they do on YouTube before, I do upload videos because I think there is a lot of capabilities in this program that most people just aren't using. So that's an ongoing thing. So if you do want to catch um, as I learn more about Caden Live, and I've been using this for two years, I'm still learning stuff almost every day. I'm going to be putting up videos. So that's the video effects. Let's jump now into the audio effects. And we have... Let's count, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 12 different families if you want. So within audio, this is quite big. There is a number of things. And again, you have the same thing with descriptions. Um, channels would be quite useful for stereo to mono, swap channels, a copy channel to stereo. For instance, if you have a blank track or you're using a mono microphone in a stereo recording or something of that nature, you can in post-production copy tracks. I've done the copy track one before, explained um, how to do that if you end up with one-sided audio. So you can fill in a blank side from a side that isn't blank. EQ and filter is very, very useful, the EQ effects here. So, you know, this would probably be stuff that you'd ideally do in pre-production or pre-processing Rather, in other words, you get these set right by monitoring the audio, listening on your headphones. But you can also work on all this stuff in post-production as well. Just to choose a random one for high-pass, apply a high-pass filter with three-point frequency. LADPCA plugins, modulators, pitch and treble, just did a video on this. Reverb, echo and delays stereo and binormal, uh, binaural images. This big plugin library from a guy called Steve Harris. Steve Harris is SWH plugins, SWH plugins, and there's a lot of these. You can see really a lot of them, in fact. It's a big library. Um, tools, volume and dynamics. Now, these are the ones I would say that are kind of basic audio use things that most people uh, would have use for so no, I've covered normalization before extremely useful likewise for key frameable volume if you have background audio and you want it to come in and out more gracefully than you'd get if you're just applying a gain edit in fact I should add gain to my favorites also very useful you also have a compressor expander extremely useful limiter extremely useful mute extremely useful fade in fade out extremely useful so you get the idea these are uh, very useful ones now to the best of my knowledge background noise removal i don't think there is an audio effect doing that in caden so you have to uh do the slightly ugly workaround in which you extract audio open it and open it in audacity and then plop it back in and then finally zam plugins and again i have no idea you can also search for a plugin by typing in the in the key by typing in letters here the point is between the audio effects and video effects i would estimate there may be as many as 200 different effects you can apply to your video and audio using caden live so i definitely recommend you know populating your project bin with some old footage perhaps and just playing around with the video and audio effects and seeing what they do the good thing about both 
in Caden is that you can apply an effect um, and it should take effect immediately both for video and audio so that's incredibly useful if you are trying to just learn via the hands-on method hope that video is useful if you're interested in Caden Live and uh, coming to grips with the full capabilities of this video editor if you want to get more videos from me about Caden Linux tech and other subjects do please feel free to subscribe to this YouTube channel thank you guys for watching